Right, it is where we at, man. Me and Curly, man. This is in front of the house, man. It's getting late, like around five something in the evening. Yeah. Almost Yep. Yep. Okay, there goes the. Yup, me and me and uh, the homie right now just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Getting some to eat and shit right there, man. You know, we ain't got much, man. We over here at the jungle, man. Check it out. This is uh, the vendor, the vendor place. Look at everything outside, man. My bike. Look at my dirty bike. Yo, the Smiley from Fresno, California. You know what I mean? Um, East Lane, Pine Rack Gang, Playboys. You know what I mean? I've been back to Cambodia now for 18 years, going on 19 years. Sometimes I just want to tell my story, you know, my autobiography on video. Now, I've been here for a long time and I've been seeing a lot of things out here in Cambodia, you know, I've been discriminated, I've been hated on, I mean, I've been accused, I've, I've been, you know I mean, I've been ups and downs, I mean, I've been on a roller coaster ride, man, my life is like ups and downs, man, it just, it, it even got curves, you know what I mean, like, uh, uh, and, I mean, it's like a sharp edge, man, I'm like close to the edge, damn near lose my head a lot of times, you know. I had to go through this shit, man. I came straight out of prison. Went straight to INS. I ain't never left. You know what I mean? The last time I was on the street was 1997. Uh, I went to Solidad State Prison. You know what I mean? I met I met a few homies there. Um, after Solidad, I thought I was going home and shit. The you know, uh, U.S. Marshal came to... He came to um, Soledad and had like a whole bunch of Asian people sign deportation. So I signed deportation because I thought Cambodia wasn't taking people back that time, you know. So I just I signed it anyway. I like okay, I'm gonna sign this, but they, can't, they ain't taking no Cambodian people back. But as soon as I signed it, people was like, "Hey man, they're deporting people to Cambodia now." But I'm like, "Damn, I messed up. I, I, I should have never signed," you know. Now I'm in Cambodia and thinking what to do, what to do, you know. Sometimes I just I just look at it as like a, 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 a lesson or something, you know, something I had to go through and learn about. I had to learn how to adapt. I, got, I had to learn how to adjust in Cambodia. I had to learn how to be a local, to be, be a Cambodian. Locals, that's, I mean, do what they do, you know. But I can't do what they do, though, man. It's hard for me to do that. I tried, man. I, 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 I sold some cookies for... Um, some some Malaysian cats. They had this cookie. I had I I was on the street from from door to door, from from market to market trying to sell cookies in the heat, man. And I, I know I tried that, and it was it was kind of like embarrassing at first, but it taught me a lot of things too. You know, at the same time, you know. Yeah, when I first got to Fresno, it was like getting to know the locals all over again, getting to know the Cambodian community all over again. Getting to know a lot of people all over again. Got to go to school and meet new friends. Meet a lot of other peoples that I don't really know, but they're Cambodian peoples. So, you know, Laos people, Asian people in particular. So, you know, a lot of things had changed from Santa Ana all the way to Fresno. As, as of now, since I've been in Fresno, you know what I mean? Just like, okay, let's let's check it out. I, you know I mean, most of the time I'll be staying home and getting to know the neighborhoods. At first, in the apartment complex where I lived in, it's called Chance. 
living in chance, man. It's like a second chance for me to start everything all over again. Like my mama always wanted a second chance for me. So we lived on Chance Street, you know, an apartment complex right, right across from the flea market. You know, Fresno Fairground, yeah, where the parking lot is at. So, you know, I go to school, getting to know a lot of other people. But most of the people that I started getting to know first is uh, Hamilton Street. It's right behind Chance Street, behind my apartment complex. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a street, it's an it's a apartment complex called Hamilton. It's Hamilton Street right, right across Chance. It's like a crisscross. So I got to know a lot of people in my neighborhood, you know, some Mexican people that's going through the same thing. His mama going through the same thing as my mama. You know, parents going through the same thing, you know, all on welfare. They got many kids, you know, how it is, man, living in poverty. So I started hanging out with these people. Next door to me, um, Cambodian people that's moving from other places, and it, it comes to Fresno. A lot of other people move from Long Beach to Fresno. A lot of people move from Santa Ana to Fresno. A lot of people from Stockton to Fresno. So Fresno was like the place where people wanted to change, I guess, you know. Fresno's like all the um, all the people from all over the place, like in California, that seek, that seeking their moments and stuff like that, is seeking for a better place, a better future for the kids. But, you know, like all the badass has been dumped in Fresno. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You know, I met this. I met this black dude in my neighborhood in my apartment complex named Lewis. Little short, light skinned black guy. You know what I mean, but he's tough. He's a one tough ass dude. You know, he likes to fight a lot, and I see him fight a lot too. Fought a lot of Mexicans. He fought a lot of other brothers. Um, we started hanging out. You know what I mean? We started just chilling, like really doing nothing much but just going around, walking around the neighborhood, walking around, walk about and stuff like that. Going to like. Going to like fields and stuff like that, you know, doing things like kids do, man, playing on the railroad tracks and sneak around, smoke cigarettes and shit like that, you know, smoking weed and shit like that, you know. Anyway, it's like uh, it's like it's like the same thing as Mini Street, Santa Ana. It's almost the same thing, you know. Kids like us, we do the same thing. And we, you know, every time we go to school and stuff like that, we walk home from school together. We walk to school together. You know, and that's without getting to, getting to know a bigger amount of group. You know, it just it's the group is getting bigger and bigger. The Cambodian community is like getting to know each other. So you know, we basically do the same thing like we were since Santa Ana. It's just it's, there's no conflicts, there's no violence, there's any, anything like that. But you know, after school, we walk home together, pick fruits from people's backyard, whatnot. Halloween come around, we dress up, snatch people's candy, or we just we don't do nothing. We just well, Ron Child still she's candies from the from the market and shit from the uh you know yeah from the stores, candy stores and stuff like that. We sneaking in and steal candies instead of going around knocking door from door to door. We do that too, but sometimes we start doing some crazy stuff like, you know, kids that are poor do you know how kids that are poor, man, we do some we do some crazy stuff. We start getting ideas on trying to get more, trying to be badass and stuff like that. Since there's no conflict in Fresno. Fresno was pretty calm when I first went over there. But then, you know, I, we, we meet up with some bad kids from other places, too. We all came from different places and stuff, like people from Modesto, some people from Santa Ana, some people from San Jose, a lot of people from Pittsburgh and stuff like that. They come here to Santa Ana. I mean, they come here to Fresno, and, you know, they badass from over there. So here we are, man, we're together. So every Halloween, we not, we're not going from door to door knocking for candies, really. We're going to door to door to see if people's not home so we can break in the house. Start breaking into people's houses, man. You know, early, man. You know what I mean? Shit. It's hard. It's hard to explain, man, why we did that. I don't know why we did that, but we did that. I don't know who influenced us. We just influenced each other. Basically, the people that I end up hanging out with, they are the people that's been doing the same thing I did when I was in Santa Ana and what they did when they was in Modesto or Stockton or whatever, wherever they came from. I never got to ask them you know, where they come from exactly, but um, some people that tells me that, okay, this is where they used to live and stuff like that. They talk about their past and stuff. I talk about my past, so we're getting to know each other. So this is how, you know, this is how L.O.P. started, you feel me? Start hanging out with the uh, Hmong people, the men people, the Laos people, stuff like that, and they, they don't really gangbang or anything like that, but we're we're out to, we're, try, we're trying to be like, you know, like a gang too, but we're not even from a gang. You know, we see other gangs like North Daniels, I mean, at 14, there wasn't really bulldogs at the time, you know, um, yeah, there's no Sureño there, it's nothing like that, it's no, not really too much of a, of like a gang group, anything like that, they have, they have PRG, they have Asian boys, but they're like small, they're not that big, it's just a lot of older people that they're like in little, in small groups, you know, banging and stuff like that, but not really banging hardcore, 
or anything like that. But um, yeah, us we just started going around breaking up people's house, even though it's not Halloween or anything like that. We just breaking up people's house, man. Since we knock on doors and start asking for random people and they're not there, we're like, okay, it's the wrong house and stuff like that. And then we keep on moving until we get the get the right house. Yeah, to make the long story short, I'm in seventh grade. When I went to seventh grade middle school, King's Canyon. Yeah. Went to King's Canyon Middle School, started knowing how to ditch school, started hanging out with people that that's from um, different gangs, you know what I mean? People that's, they crips, they crips now, you know what I mean? This, this guy that I hung out with, it was like, he, he got a, a messed up leg, they call him Cripple or something like that, he's from Asian Boys, and I hung out with some Asian Boys, and I hung out with some other guys from TRGs, and people started asking me where I'm from, like, hey, man, what are you, are you a rascal? I'm like, what, what's that? And then people were asking me, what, what are you, a crip? I'm like, what is that? And they asked me, are you a blood? Like, what is that? You know what I mean? Shit, I don't know, man, I just got a group called LOP, we just go around breaking people's house, man. Yeah, I mean, anyways, these Asian boys and these TRGs and stuff like that, they was, they was hanging out with me, going to houses and shit, knocking on doors, and people's not home, we just break into the window, we just... We just take shit from the house, man. We start stealing shit out the cars and stuff like that. Start going to like, start going to like places that we don't know. Like, look, it looks like a a better neighborhood. Look like a, a rich community. We go there and you know, to, to hopefully score a house that's gonna be packed full of stuff, full of goodies and stuff like that. A lot of people are looking for stereos, nice TVs. You know what I mean? Watches and whatnot. Me, I'm just looking for some guns. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm so fascinated about guns, but I wanted guns, you know what I mean? So I could walk around, you know, with guns in my pocket thinking I'm hard or shit like that, man. But really, I ain't that hard. But I, I like guns. I don't know. Yeah, anyways, after a while, I, I ditched Kings Canyon for a long time, for a lot, of, like mostly a lot of times. I guess my mom had found out that I weren't going to school. So she got, I don't know, she figured out maybe I, I had to get transferred. So I got transferred to um, Fourth Miller Middle School. Fourth Miller Middle School, I had to take the bus over there, you know. So I started going to Fourth Miller, stuff like that, and then I met up with more, more TRGs and more Asian boys, you know. And I hung out with Asian boys most of the time, but I wasn't gangbanging, you know. And a lot of people thinking I'm from Asian boys until, you know, I, I got... I got um I got to ninth grade. When I got to ninth grade, I was a freshman, and next thing you know, I got caught with a gun. You know, my backpack. I got caught with a gun in my backpack, and then they um I guess they they had to kick me out of school. I started going to continuation schools, and I meet with a lot of Asian boys. I still I'm still meeting a lot of Asian boys. I haven't met any mostly any TRGs, but you know. When I went to a continuation school at the sanctuary, it just got a whole bunch of Asian people there, like the Laos, the Hmong, not many Hmongs, not many men, but there were a lot of Hispanics, you know what I mean, Hispanic, Cubans, Puerto Rican, and Mexicans, and stuff like that, and they're TRG, you know what I mean, they're tiny rascal gang, so I don't know, man, for some reason, the, the homie crook, the homie crook, like, man, jump that fool in, man, put that fool in 6th Street, Sin City, TRG, man, look like he, he need to be with us and shit, you know, the Asian boy's like, nah, he Asian boy, he need to be with the Asian boys and the TRG's like, you need to be with the TRG, but I made up my mind, said, right, I'm gonna be a TRG, and ever since, ever since then, nigga, I became a TRG instead of a LOP, but all my LOP little homies and shit, they all jumped into TRG also, you know what I mean, yeah, you know, this is how it started, man. It started getting wild. Ever since I got into TRG, man, my guns, my guns just start getting, you know, getting into display. <laughs> you know, I'm starting pointing guns at people, taking their shit. Man, I start taking people's shoes, jackets, and if they wearing red and they looking like a bulldog, they're getting checked. That's I don't know what I don't know why I did that, but you know, it's just I don't know, man. It's just part of the initial, the initial, uh, initial, the initial gang affiliation or something you know i don't know what it is man but uh i felt like i need to do something like that to prove myself to the hood so here it is man i started meeting up with people that's trg that i've been hanging out with when we wasn't banging and they are trg too at the same time we started stealing cars now and now we're doing drive-bys we just drive by like you know the mexican neighborhood and tell them fuck they hood and all that stuff and they start yelling back we're gonna bust we're gonna bust a we're gonna, we bust a circle man we're gonna come back around again if they if they start cussing back at us and start throwing gang signs at us we're just gonna come back around we're gonna come when we come back around this time we're not gonna say anything we're just gonna turn off the lights and we're gonna come on slowly and we're gonna start busting cabs on people's for no reason yeah and after a while that shit became addictive man i became trigger happy and my crew, I'm not going to say no names, but my crew started getting addicted to 
to busting caps on people that poop your ass, man. It's your finger. Every time we get guns, we we trying to test it out, man. When we test it out, we test it on people. We're going to test it on the taggers, you know what I mean? Taggers and shit, they out there trying to get be famous, tagging their names all over the place and shit. You know, most famous taggers and shit, these names and stuff like that. They got shot, man. It might have been us. It might have been my group and stuff like that because a lot of these people is getting shanked up, getting stabbed, getting shot, getting beat the fuck down just because we, we, we just don't like them for some reason. You know, that's, I seems, it seems like I got to make a name for myself, so my addiction was to get a name. My addiction was to, to be up there, to be the man, the man, the trigger man. So I'm trying to shoot everybody I can, anybody. Anybody in their mama stepping in my face, I'm going to shoot them. You know, anyways, man, then we start putting more people in the hood. We're trying to get the, the, the gang bigger. So we're putting people in the hood more and more and more and more. Every day we're putting people in the hood. You know what I mean? Telling this, come on, let's steal cars and this, that. Then we funking with the LBs, we funking with the LCs, we funking with everybody. When the Asian boys broke up with us, we started funking with the Asian boys too, but not really though that time. It was like other other ethnic group like Mexicans and whatever. White boys, we just beat them up for a hell of it. You know what I mean? And, and black dudes, we just shoot them for fun. All I know is I, I, I want my name up there. All I know is that I want my name to be feared. And this is the things that I do to get that. You know, my ambition was to was to be on top, to be feared. You know what I mean? For everybody to respect me. You know what I mean? To put in dirt. So every day I do that. I don't go to school. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to go to continuation. I'm I'm dropping I'm a dropout. So I'm just gonna drop out and do the things I do. So what I do is I still I still got my boys breaking in the houses, bringing the guns. You know what I mean? Stealing cars, doing drive-by, getting more bullets out of big fives, twenty twos. Most of the time we use the twenty twos, twenty fives, and stuff like that. You know, and rogers be playing with those. And if we're gonna shoot big guns, we won't have to go with three fifty sevens. We're gonna have to uh, go with the thirty eight special. We're gonna have thirty eights. Anything revolver, it don't drop shells. You know what I mean? But we dropping leads though. It don't take that long to get our name up there, man. We we was up there real quick. It doesn't take that long. It took like a couple months, a few months. Next thing you know, the name is out there. You know what I mean? Like, okay, this guy is this guy. This guy, oh, my God, this is what he does. And I got a lot of people following me, just like Facebook. You know what I mean? You, you got a hot story, people going to follow you. And that's what it was. It's no Facebook at the time, but people was following me physically. And then, you know, to make the long story short, soon after that, I started realizing that this is time to go to gladiator school, man. You know, we beating up so many people, taking pe- so many people's belonging, shooting at so many people's. We don't, we don't wait around to see if they killed or they what not. You know what I mean? We just boom, 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 and they be gone. We out there. We're not going to sit around and see if you're dead or anything like that. We're just shooting. You know what I mean? Shit, well, if we don't do no walk up or anything like that, we're just kids trying to shoot people up. That's it. That's all we know. Yeah, anyways, man, the next chapter is going to be the war stories, man. It's gonna be the gladiator school story. It's gonna be in, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be in Stockton, California. It's gonna be YA. Shit, it's gonna be always close to to um. What's his name? Carl Houghton. Carl Houghton to DeWitt Nelson from DeWitt Nelson to Preston from Preston to YTS from YTS to Chad and then Discharge. I'm gonna tell that story in the next chapter. And if uh, I'm, I'm going to do all this chapter one at a time first, and then when I finish, and people want me to elaborate on any story, any, you know what I mean, any other stories that they want me to elaborate on, they can ask questions later after this.